Dear students, in this lecture, we will study thermal conductivity. In order to study thermal conductivity, we need to know about heat transfer process. Heat transfer is a science that studies the energy transfer between two bodies due to temperature difference. There can be no net heat transfer between two mediums that are at the same temperature. That means when there is no temperature difference between two points or between two mediums or between two adjacent bodies, there is no flow of heat from one body to another or one point to another point. Therefore, the basic requirement for heat transfer is presence of temperature difference. This temperature difference is known as temperature gradient. That means it is the ratio of difference in temperature to the small change in length. Heat flow occurs only in the direction of decreasing temperature. That means heat flows from higher temperature region to lower temperature region. The temperature difference is the driving force for heat transfer just as the voltage difference is the driving force for electric current flow and pressure difference is the driving force for fluid flow. That means we need a temperature difference in order to have a thermal conductivity in a material medium. There are three modes of heat transfer or three types of heat transfer. They are Conduction, Convection, Radiation. Let us see what are all these. Conduction. An energy transfer across a system boundary due to a temperature difference by the mechanism of intermolecular interactions. Conduction needs matter and does not require any bulk motion of matter. In order to get thermal conduction, we need to have presence of matter. It is done by the intermolecular interactions inside a material medium when there is a temperature difference. Next one is convection. An energy transfer across a system boundary due to a temperature difference by the combined mechanism of intermolecular interactions and bulk transport. This convection needs fluid matter. That means in case of liquids and gases, the mode of heat transfer is by convection process. It occurs at system boundaries. Next one is radiation. Radiation heat transfer involves the transfer of heat by electromagnetic radiation that arises due to the temperature of the body. Whenever the temperature of the body is increased, there is a production of electromagnetic radiation by that body. This radiation does not need any type of material medium or any matter. It is independent of the material medium. Now we will see thermal conductivity. Thermal conduction or thermal conductivity is the transfer of heat through a solid or from one solid to another. When you heat a metal strip at one end, the heat travels to the other end. By looking at this animation, you can see that as you heat the metal, the particles vibrate. These vibrations make the adjacent particles to vibrate. This leads to again the adjacent particles to vibrate. This process will continue throughout the solid or along the length of the solid. The vibrations are passed along the metal and so the heat is transferred from one end to other end. This is thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity means 
the transfer of heat through a solid or from one solid to another when you heat a metal strip at one end the heat travels to the other end by means of particle vibration or thermal agitation the particles or atoms in that solid will vibrate this makes adjacent particles to vibrate by by means of vibration of the atoms the heat continues to flow along a metal strip now we will derive the equation for the flow of heat through a solid bar here students in this lecture we will derive an equation for a flow of heat through a solid bar solid rectangular bar consider a long metal bar of uniform area of cross section a which is heated at one end and heat flows along the length of the bar suppose that the bar lies along x axis whose origin lies at the hot end as shown in figure that means x is equal to 0 this is the hot end now let a distance x from the hot end let theta be the temperature above the surroundings and d theta by dx be the temperature gradient at any time this is the point which is at a distance x from hot end or origin here the temperature is theta and temperature gradient is d theta by dx temperature gradient means it is a ratio of small change in temperature with respect to small change in the distance along the x axis that means it is a change of temperature with respect to change of distance consider two planes m and n these are two planes m and n that means this is m plane this is n plane perpendicular perpendicular to the length of the bar at a distance x and x plus delta x from the hot end that is the thickness of section mn will be delta x see here this m plane is at a distance x from the origin and this is another plane n which is at a distance x plus delta x therefore the thickness of section m and n will become delta x also the temperature at n will be theta plus d theta or we can write it as theta plus do theta by do x into delta x by the definition of partial differentiation we can write this and the temperature gradient at n will be d by dx of theta at that point what is theta at that point it is theta plus do theta by do x into delta x therefore the temperature at n will be d by dx of theta plus do theta by do x into delta x these are the temperatures and temperature gradients at planes m and n now we will calculate the heat flowing per second in this solid bar the heat flowing per second into the element at m is given by the definition of thermal conductivity that is q1 is equal to minus k into a into d theta by dx keep this as equation number 1 where k is the coefficient of thermal conductivity of this solid bar a is the area of cross section d theta by dx is the temperature gradient at the point or at the plane m also the heat flowing out per second from the element at n is given by q2 is equal to minus k a d by dx of theta plus do theta by do x into delta x this is similar to the above equation number 1 but here 
the temperature is different therefore the gradient will be different now simplifying this equation for q2 if we multiply this d by dx to theta plus dou theta by dou x into delta x we have q2 is equal to minus k a d theta by dx minus k d by dx is outside outside the bracket and another dou theta by dou x is there dou, therefore we will get dou square theta by dou x square into delta x keep this as equation number two thus the heat gained by the section m n per second is given by taking the difference of q1 and q2 this is the heat gained by the section mn that is represented by q that is equal to q1 minus q2 in order to get q1 minus q2 we have to subtract equation number 2 from equation number 1 we have equation number 1 as minus k a d theta by dx and equation number 2 is minus k a d theta by dx minus k a dou square theta by dou x square into delta x since in that in equation number minus k a d theta by dx is there here if you subtract this it will become minus into minus plus this also becomes plus minus k d theta by dx plus k d theta by dx gets cancels we are left with plus k a dou square theta by dou x square into delta x that is given as equation number 3 u is equal to q1 minus q2 that is equal to k a dou square theta divided by dou x square into delta x now before the steady state is reached the quantity of q is used partially to raise the temperature of the bar say qi and partially radiated out say qr now we will see whenever we started heating the solid bar got heated along the along its length before the steady state is reached that means complete bar should be having same temperature before that temperature or before that steady state is reached the quantity of q is used for partially to raise the temperature of the bar that means some amount of the heat is used to partially raise the temperature of the bar that is represented by qi and some amount of it will be radiated out that is represented by qr therefore total heat q is equal to qi plus qr put this as equation number 4 now we will calculate what is qi and what is qr therefore we will get total amount of heat used let dou theta by dou t be the rate of rise of temperature of rod at section mn that means it is the rate of change of heat dou theta by dou t that means it is the rate of change of temperature of rod dou theta by dou t at section mn the heat used per second to raise the temperature of the bar at section mn will be qi what is qi it is the heat used per second to raise the temperature of the bar at section mn that will be equal to mass into specific heat into rate of increase of temperature that means we have to calculate mass we know that density is equal to mass by volume or if we express this for mass we will get volume into density that is used here a into delta x a is the area of cross section of the rectangular bar solid bar and delta x is the change in length along x axis that means this terms inside the bracket will constitute for volume 
inside this bracket these terms will lead to the volume element of this solid bar volume into density rho is the density of the material of the bar that means rho density into a delta x volume will give us mass of that material into s s is the specific heat of the material of the bar what is specific heat it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of this material bar by 1 degree centigrade this is the specific heat of the material of the bar it depends upon the type of the material do theta by do t that is the rate of rise of temperature of the rectangular bar therefore we have calculated the heat used per second to raise the temperature of the bar qi that is qi is equal to a delta x rho into s into do theta by do t this is equation number 5 now we will see the qr the amount of heat lost due to radiation the amount of heat lost due to radiation will be qr it is equal to e into p into delta x into theta where e is the emissive power of the surface of bar p is the perimeter of the surface theta be the average excess temperature above the surrounding of the bar between m and n delta x is the thickness of that m n section the amount of heat lost will depend upon emissive power of that surface and the total surface area that means perimeter of that surface the average excess temperature theta and the thickness of mn section that is qr is equal to ep delta x theta this is equation number 6 now by using equations 3 4 5 and 6 that is this is the equation number 3 it is q is equal to k a do square theta by do x square delta x that is substituted to this on uh, left hand side of equation number 4 and q a and q r from equation number 5 and 6 are substituted here that means we have to substitute equation number 3 5 and 6 to the equation number 4 that is equal to that will be k a do square theta by do x square delta x is equal to for q i it is a delta x rho s do theta by do t plus for q r it is e p do x into theta now dividing this equation by k a into delta x that means on the left hand side k a delta x is present it will get cancelled we are only left with dou square theta by dou x square it is equal to here if we divide by k a delta x a delta x will be cancelled we are left with rho s divided by k into dou theta by dou t plus here e p delta x theta is there if we divide this by k a into delta x delta x delta x will be cancelled we are left with e p theta divided by k into a that is dou square theta by dou x square is equal to rho s by k dou theta by dou t plus e p divided by k a into theta this is the general equation for the rectilinear flow of heat along a bar and it is known as Fourier equation of heat flow or we have derived the equation for the flow of heat through a solid bar.